Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to work on understanding the chain rule. So the chain rule is used when you want to take the derivative of a function inside of another function or the composition of two functions. And here's how it works. So if I want to take the derivative of the composition of functions, I need to take the derivative of the outside function, leave the inside as it is, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now, when you first look at this rule, it doesn't seem like it makes a whole lot of sense. After all, how come you don't just take the derivative of the outside and the derivative of the inside and then call it good? Why is it that it has to be packaged up in just this way? Well, we're going to explore that uh, question, and after we're done, you'll see exactly why it has to be packaged up that way, and hopefully it'll make a lot more sense, okay? So to understand the chain rule, or what you're doing when you're looking at the derivative of the composition, you have to go all the way back to just what it means to be the composition. So let's suppose we took a number. What would happen if I plugged it into this new function here? Well, the very first thing that would happen is that it would go into our g function, since that's the one on the inside. So we'd take some sort of value, and it would go directly into g. Now, g would do whatever it you know is designed to do, depending on what function it is, and it would produce an output. And let's call that output g of x. All right, so that looks pretty straightforward so far. Now, after g is done, then it feeds its value directly into f. So, okay, we get some sort of value out of here. Now it gets fed directly into your f function, and f will do something to it. So f of g is what it produces in the end. So this is the process of composition. You know, if I was to take a number, I could plug it in, go into G, then it'd go into F, and then I'd be done. So when you're looking at the derivative of the composition, then you're really wanting to know the derivative of this entire process. And it's really made up of these two smaller processes. So now let's write out how the derivative is going to work. So if I want to know how this first piece has changed, then I want to know, well, what is G prime and then I'm essentially starting at x, so g of x. For the second part, I do want to know how the change of f is. So I'm definitely going to find f prime, but I'm not going to do it of x because that's not where this function is actually starting. It's starting at g of x. So on the inside here, there's a little g of x. And this is exactly what the chain rule is doing. It's finding the derivative of each of these components, but it has to take into account that both these functions start in a different place. So for the f function, it's starting at g of x. And it just seems convention that we usually write the f function first, since the order of multiplication does not matter. There we go. So just to convince you that uh, the chain rule really works like it should, let's do a quick example with some actual numbers, okay? In this one, I have a function 2x minus 5 squared, and we're interested in finding the derivative at h uh, at the number 4, okay? So let's first draw a schematic of exactly what's going on here, okay? So imagine taking the number 4 and plugging it into this inside function. Let's call that inside 1g, okay? So when 4 gets plugged in here, I would have 2 times 4, that would be 8, minus 5, and that would be a 3. So I know that my inner function g takes it from 4 to 3. Now this 3 is fed into my outside function, that's our squaring function. And when it gets fed in there, it produces a 9. So let's call the second function... Okay, and now looks, let's look at the derivative of each of these uh, smaller functions. So the derivative of g by itself would be the derivative of this inside piece. Well, the derivative here would just be a 2. All right, now let's look at the derivative of f. f would be our squaring function. So the derivative of f, um, let's see, would be 2x. And now let's carefully put together our pieces, okay? So as I'm looking on the change of the first piece, I want to know how does g change when it starts at 4. So what is g prime at the number 4? 
Well, looking at its derivative, looks like it's always 2. It's a nice constant. I'd say that it's 2. Now, what is the derivative of f? Keeping in mind that it starts at 3. Well, I'd plug my 3 right into here, so 2 times 3, and this would give me a value of 6. So now for the derivative of the entire thing, that'd be the derivative of h. Then I'd want to know, okay, what's it doing as it changes here? Uh, so let's see, that would be h of 4. So I'd take my f of 3 and multiply by g prime of 4, or simply say 6 times 2, which is 12. All right, so that would be the derivative of my h function at 4. Let's also do this just using the chain rule and see how it really works out the same way. First of all, you want to imagine your function written as a composition. Okay, so I'm going to highlight my outside function in blue. That'd be our squaring function. And we'll do our inner function as 2x minus 5. So according to the chain rule, the very first thing I need to do is take the derivative of the outside. So let's bring the 2 down. The power gets reduced by 1, so imagine a little 1 sitting up there. And the inside function stays exactly the same. Then we'd multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 2x minus 5 is 2. Okay. And now this guy represents our derivative of h. So to find the derivative at the number 4, now we could plug a 4 into this entire thing. So I have 2, 2 times 4 minus 5 times 2. Let's see, so 2 times 4 is 8 minus 5 is a 3. And sure enough, I, here I have the 6 times 2, and it is still equal to 12. So in looking at the chain rule, all we're really doing is looking at the change in both of those pieces. You just have to remember that both of these functions start in a different spot. Now the really neat part is, after you look at how the chain rule works for three functions, you could really even think of the chain rule for many, many more functions and build what that would look like. So real quick, let's see if we can do a triple chain rule. So I have a function inside of a function inside of another function. So if I was to just start with some sort of value x, the very first function that it would go to, according to my little diagram here, would actually be k. So k would get a hold of it and produce some sort of value. Let's call this k of x. Now after it's done producing its value, it would get fed into the next function. And that function is g. So it produces another value. This one is at g of h of x. Oh, we don't need that marker. All right. And the very last one that it gets fed into would be our f function. And this would produce f of g of k. All right, so we have lots of packaging up here, but now I wanna know about the derivative of the entire process. So I'll be looking at the derivative of each of its components, keeping in mind that they all start in a different spot. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. The very first thing I do is say, okay, what is the derivative of the first component? Well, this is the derivative of k, but it's starting at x, x. Then we'd multiply this by the next piece, so now I'm looking at the derivative of g, but this one doesn't start at x, it starts at k of x. So I have to put that on the inside, k of x. And now I need the derivative for the very last piece. What is the derivative of f? But again, this starts in a different spot. That's right where it starts. This starts at g of k of x. There we go. 
And now we can write down the entire rule. And of course, it's usually just convention to start with our f and write it the other way around. So our triple chain rule is f prime of g of k of x multiplied by, we'll do this one, g prime of k of x multiplied by k prime of x. So here's a great way that you can remember the chain rule. You really just start with your outermost function and you keep stripping off layer by layer, taking the derivative of the, the layers as you go down until you're left with the derivative of your innermost layer. All right, so now that we also know the triple chain rule, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let's see if we can figure out the derivative of sine of the square root of 4x minus 1. So really hiding in here, it's like I've built in three functions. My outermost function is sine, the next function is the square root function, and the very innermost function is 4x minus 1. Okay, I'm going to start off. I'm just going to end up writing this um, as sine of, say, 4x minus 1 to the 1 half. That way I can apply the, uh, say, power rule when I get to that part. Okay, time for the derivative. Start off with your outermost function. Start with this layer here. So the derivative of sine is cosine. Okay, so that layer is done and everything inside that layer is going to stay the same for now. So 4x minus 1 to the 1 half. All right, now multiply by the derivative of your next layer. So my next function is this 1 half. We'll bring down the power. Then reduce that power by 1. Everything inside of there is going to stay the same for now. Now I'll multiply by the next layer and its derivative. So the derivative of the very innermost one is just a 4. Okay, and now this guy is done, and we need to simply uh, package it all up and write it out. Uh, so let's see, I'll have a 4 that will cancel out with one of these 2s. Uh, this will end up on the bottom since it has a negative exponent, and all of this will end up on the top. So I'll have cosine of the square root of 4x minus 1. So there's all of that stuff. Multiplied by 2. All divided by the square root of 4x minus 1. There you go. So you can see that if you really understand the chain rule, uh, doing functions inside of functions inside of even more functions, uh, it's actually not so bad. You're really just looking at the changes of each component uh, in that composition. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.